that welcome back to the shop let's just put that to one side for a second and today we're going to talk about this rod so this rod is uh, as the title says this is an oblique rod right well what does that mean well you might have seen these before right and what i'm going to do actually is because i've got a fascination with con rods like some people might know some people might not We've got, I've got loads, I've got loads. So there's this one, and there's many features about this one. I'm gonna do videos. Every week, probably, we're gonna do a Conrod video. We've got oh, an unfortunate rod that died. We've got other rods, so this is a, um, a mucky, but titanium rod, what you'd call, in a sense, a common rod, but that's a high performance one. I've got stuff like, um, Fork and blade rods. These are mucky as fucking need cleaning. These have been. I bought these just to do a video on and then chucked them in a box and then basically forgot about them. So we're digging stuff out and going through the videos. Any rod. That's what we're going to do. Um, I've also got on hand a few pistons and stuff. Like, for instance, this is tapered. It is wider at the top and small at the bottom. And this is tapered, and as you see, oh, oh, and you can't see, because if I got it right, tapered. It's not actually for this piston, but whatever. Um, I'm going to talk about a lot of things about rods and do this entire weekly thing about certain aspects of rods. And then probably move on to pistons and just do something like that. So every week we're going to have a, in a sense, almost like a show and tell, but we're talking about things. Uh, the tapered rod, this bit at the top, you can see that the, the um, small end is tapered. I'll tell you why. Um, this is actually tapered-ish. It's got a different name, but we'll we'll talk about that in a different video. If you know what that is, and the reason why it's like that, don't spoil it for others. You know what I mean? No one likes a gobshite in the comments who just starts copying and pasting something off Wikipedia or whatever. That's what the videos are for. <laughs> I'm the gobshite. So, you know, so on and so forth. Anyway, the title of this video is about this. So you can see there that it's broken, right? Um, a normal rod, just say, like this one. This one is stuck. But this stuck rod, you can see, is split. If you had a conventional engine with all the cylinders pointing towards the sky, um this would be horizontal, right? So just say the cylinder is a vertical cylinder and this is a horizontal split. As you can see, this is oblique. So it is not along the, it is not perpendicular to the, 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 the up of the rod, the center line of the rod. It is not perpendicular. It is off to one side. Why, why is this? And this is actually cool because this, this is a fractured rod. Um, we've got loads of things on this rod. This rod is actually a diesel rod, and there are many reasons why. You can tell this is a diesel rod. It is very thin, right? For its, for the size of the big end and the small end and the length of it, so centre to centre, there to there, it is very thin, right? I'll explain, and again, don't be a gobshite in the comments. You know, the whole point of doing these videos is that they're little bite sizes, so people can just take a bit, and then next week, take a bit more, that kind of thing. Uh, drip feeding, that's what we're going to call the. We'll call these videos drip-fed drip videos. Regardless, why is this offset to a side like this? You might be thinking to yourself, well, hang about. I've been told, or I've watched your videos, Matt, where you've said that some of the greatest forces that rods go under is when they're pulled. Surely, you'd want the forces to pull bolts, right? Because that's basically what they're designed to do, right? They're designed to pull things together and the forces against fasteners are in tensile, right? Not shear, that would be nasty. Surely by doing this and having the pull force just say that way, you are adding an element of a shearing force. This You're trying to bend the bolt instead of pulling, you know, the force in line with the bolt's tensile force would be that way. Well, this definitely isn't that way. The reason why this is cut like this is actually nothing to do with all the forces and stuff like i've said this is a diesel rod and 
you can see that this, you know, compared to my hand, compared to this rod, which is out of a, a Ducati, this big end is huge, right? And that's because they have large strokes and uh, stroke to bore relationship. They have quite big strokes where the bore, you know, is smaller in relation. Usually if you, you know, if you can have a two litre diesel versus a two litre petrol. They are slower revving, all that kind of, you know, jazz which explains a lot of these elements. But this actually isn't that. What this is, is that, let's just say this tape is your cylinder, right? And, you know, it's a cylinder that starts at the top and comes to the bottom, so you're just gonna have to imagine a cylinder there. I couldn't find anything that's the right size. It took me ages to find this, this tape that is the right size. Now, some diesels are monoblock, right? Where the whole thing is this massive big thing of cast iron or something, you know, think about trucks and, tractors and stuff like that <laughs> right where was i oh yes oh where did i get to all oh, right yeah so um rods why is it like this that was it i was talking about the engines so some of the time right you might have a um a problem that is just say just a spun bearing just say you know which one it is which cylinder it is or a ring snagged or something crap like that right taking the engine out or dropping the crank out and all that nonsense is just a no-no the other thing is as well is the crank weighs a ton so unlike some engines right where you can like you know we're talking bike engines where you can fish out the crank with the pistons on and put the pistons and cranks and rods you can put them all in as one unit with these things you can't these cranks are massive right these cranks are huge they weigh an absolute bloody ton the pistons are the big steel bad boys right or have these composite pistons where they're half steel half aluminium but the diesel pistons they're huge and they weigh a ton and you can't all of that in a, a straight six just say just forget it right so instead what you can do is you can diagnose each piston and say, ah, that's the problem. That's the one with the, a lot of them have oil test points. So you can run the engine, go, oh, the, this bearing's knackered because the oil pressure, the arse has dropped out of it when it gets to here. So you can do stuff like that. So what you could do is you can take off the cap, right? And you can fish out, you basically stick a wooden, what is it, on, you know, past the, past the, um, I've got something pointy at hand. Oh, yeah, that bit of wire will do. So, just imagine this is a wooden stick. You can get underneath the piston, past the, you know, just say you crank your main journals here, your crank pins there, and you just give it a whack after you've removed the what is it, right? You can just whack your piston out the top of the head, right? Because you can take the head off, great. Now you've got all these, just say a bank of six cylinders, you can get at them absolutely fantastic and we can do this properly but the problem is is that this is how wide your con rod is and if we look at our bore our piston goes in there right we can't get it out and that's where this comes in because you if you split it right in the middle you literally couldn't get it out and you've got to get round this um crank pin the crank pin is nearly the size of the bore because it's got to take the torque and the rods got the con rods crankshaft's got to stop twisting and all this rubbish. So what you do is, is as you know, as you're a mechanic -y guy, you you come in here underneath, right? You turn the crank round. You have this at the bottom. You undo these bolts. You rotate the crank. Or you leave one in. Just you turn the crank around or whatever. You take your cap off like that. And now with our cap, we can get it through the bar. You can put little blockers on there or whatever but you can it's like i say it's trying to find something that's perfect you can because the rod can tip now because the piston you can get your rod out where if it was that way so let's just say that's the bottom of a cap like this you can't fit that through the bore it is just not going through that bore but if you tip it you know obviously it's not for the cap it's for the rod you can get it through you can literally Maneuver the rod so you can get the whole thing through. And like I say, there'd be a bit of a bigger bore, but this is what I could find that is that size. You know what I mean? But you can basically fish that rod through. So when you're assembling, you've got your piston on here, right? You just assemble this back through. 
it goes on the top of your cap you know you can jiggle this around because this is floating you gotta remember this is a pivot in the bore right so it's floating around and you can just cap it onto your crank pin cap that back on bolts in there you know bloody fucking hell bolts in there like so put your bolts in torque them up Bob's your aunt, his mother's brother's uncle's dog's nephew's canary. Right? You're all done. And that's that's literally it, right? There's no special design. Now the thing is, because these engines are so slow revving, blah 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 blah, you gotta get the orientation right, and depending on the engine that'll show you which way it is. It's generally to which way the engine turns. Do you know what I mean? Because you don't want the highest torque there to be sat on the split. You want it that way. Right, so your highest torque is more, well, ish, as I was going to say, it depends. That would be, no, there, there you go. So you'd want it to be sat here, you know what I mean? And when the engine's flung up, you want it kind of, you know, towards the top. This isn't for high-performance engines, so you shouldn't see, you should always see high-performance engines with a perpendicular split to the rod centre line, where... This obliqueness is fine for stuff like slower revving engines, um, just because the stresses on the con rods aren't as high, and hence are one of the reasons why this is a lot thinner. If you look at the thickness of this rod, these rods are almost the same thickness, but look at the crank pins and look at the con rod length, right? It's stupidly different. Right? There's a big difference between those two, but the the the, the widths. Are almost the same. What are what is it? I've got a ruler here. So this one is 19 mil thick. You can see with all the crap. This one's 15 mil thick. Um, and the neck thickness is actually this one's a bit bigger. You know, so sort of across the span of the eye. Um, but any road. So you may have not. You may have known that. You may have not known that. You may have never even seen a rod like this. Uh, but we haven't finished with this rod yet. In the next videos, we'll go through these surfaces, these thrusting surfaces, uh, the taperedness, uh, these bushings with the channels in them, thrusting faces, blah, 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 blah. And like I say, we'll talk about the overall rod, the stroke, the um, centre centre length, and blah, 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 and crank pin diameters and all that kind of jazz. Hope that makes sense. I'm ever so slightly fogging up, which is a bit annoying. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.